Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. Earthlings everywhere, Martians, aliens, everybody. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. I'm playing a bit of dress up, not going anywhere in particular. Um, so let's have a little chat about a few things. Let's start with Megan and Harry. Yes, yes, I've seen. Um, I will actually say, for a woman who knows her Fifty Shades of Beige, because let's face it, that's what she said in the Netflix thing. I, I watched the Netflix thing. And she said that she felt she always had to wear beige when she was in the royal family, so as not to stand out. But that now she's not in the royal family, she doesn't wear beige anymore. Something like that. I'm not quoting her verbatim. Well, the pictures and the little interview, the little video, it's on Vimeo. I'll put a link to one of the Daily Mail articles, because I think they've got a link to the video in that. Uh, or No, People. People magazine. Remember People? The Five Friends, Thomas Markle, The Letter. People, yeah, because there is a link in that to the, the video. And it's a video of a, a youth charity, young people, I forget the name, but that's in the article as well, who are trying to stop cyberbullying, and one can't help but applaud them. And there's a little video of Harry and Meghan sitting together, holding a phone and supposedly talking to these kids who answer the phone in front of a camera and go, <gasps> I mean, I always answer. I never, ever answer the phone, actually, unless I've got my cameraman filming me, just in case it's a surprise call coming from someone. So I do find the video incredibly staged. What I will say is, I liked Megan's outfit. I thought she looked very nice. I know a lot of people don't want to hear that. I've never criticised her really for her physical appearance, more her choice of clothes, but I did think that the little, she's got a little beige polo neck on with short sleeves. And for once, for once, I, th I thought she looked really nice actually. I know, I'm sure a lot of you will disagree with me there. That's fine. Um, Harry, on the other hand, didn't really look quite so well. That's, that's the way I would put it. He doesn't look that well. Well, I suppose he's under a lot of pressure, all the court cases, finances, stuff like that. Now, I could be being very cynical, and I have to put this caveat in. I don't know Meghan and Harry. I don't know anyone in the royal family. I don't have any contact. I'm not a royal reporter. I'm just a bod, like all of you, watching and observing. And I feel that after all the criticism in the press, or rather speculation of a separation and a divorce, that's exactly what I'd do if I was really getting divorced and everybody, there were rumours, I'd say, let's put this to bed, let's have some PR photograph together. So to me, it doesn't prove one jot that they're, they're together or not together. My instinct is they're not together, but that's not a fact. I emphasise that is not a fact. Then I see that now she's going to the Invictus Games. Well, why not announce that at the beginning when the first announcement was made? Why now? Oh yeah, I'm going to the Invictus Games. So I feel there are negotiations going on behind the scenes. Maybe a bit of give and a bit of take and okay, you can tag along. Is she going to go to the polo stuff or just the Invictus? I have no idea. I actually asked you all the other day, do you think she'll go to Invictus? Remember that? And we all thought no. So why the change of heart? Is it because she suddenly realized there are no gullible billionaires out there willing to take over where Harry's left off? Has she decided that she needs Harry after all? Has her new PR said to her, you, you better get in with those royals, big chick, because you're nothing without them. Is that what's going on? I'm, I've got a cynical mind. I mean, perhaps they are middle-aged and in love. I really don't know. But I feel if they genuinely were, it wouldn't be such an effort. I mean, they both look very like they've spent time dressing up for this little video. Um, they've sat there together. It's, it's not like a casual chat like we all do here on YouTube or where people put stuff out. I mean, I see Catherine and William put stuff out and yes, it's staged to a, a certain amount, but things go wrong. It's never that polished. So I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. Right now, I want to move on to something else. You all know that I do promote other YouTubers that are struggling, that uh, have a lot less subscribers. I also promote YouTubers that are far bigger. Um, I believe in all YouTubers should help lift each other up. Now I'm going to talk about a YouTuber, but I'm not going to say their name, and I'm sure none of you would ever have heard of them anyway. There's a very, very small channel. 
only has a few hundred subscribers and has been dedicating quite a bit of time to trolling me and Graham. Now, um, the latest is that this YouTuber actually stole some property that is mine, copyright property, and I have put in a copyright claim on their channel and they have received a strike and the video has been taken down. They've subsequently put up a community post claiming that that footage belongs to ITV. So this part is for them because I gather from their community post they're a little bit obsessed with me and Graham. Firstly, I'd never heard of you, little YouTuber. I'd never come across your channel. You're not my style. I don't like YouTube channels that dedicate to hatred and slagging people off, whether they're famous celebrities, members of the royal family, or not even Meghan and Harry. I do not like that kind of style. Okay, it's free speech. Some people like it. You had never come up on my radar. Secondly, I am not an Alex Belfield fan. I am not an Alex Belfield hater. I am indifferent because you seem to be under the misapprehension that Graham and I are die-hard Alex Belfield fans. We're not. When he went to prison, we both felt that that's bad for anybody. I mean, yeah, people go to prison and we all know the reasons why, but Graham having been in prison that it might be an idea it, for some of Alex's fans if they wanted to write to him, offer their support to explain how and also if they wanted to send money. If that does not make us Alex Belfield fans, that is our free speech. That is our right of free speech. In the same way that if, for example, Everton Football Club were to come under criticism and I felt it were wrong, I may well make a video defending Everton Football Club, but I don't like football and I'm certainly not an Evertonian. Well, I put that the wrong way round. I'm not an Evertonian because I'm really not into football. In the same, and it wouldn't mean that I hate Man United or Liverpool City. Just because we make a video about a subject does not make us a fan or an anti-fan. So, little YouTuber, please understand that one as well. The reason you have come into my radar is because some people did notice your video, brought it to my attention. I did watch it. I didn't think it was particularly well made, but I was shocked to see that you had included quite a few seconds of an interview that I conducted. I interviewed Steve Skerritt. Steve Skerritt was DC Steve Skerritt of Stenning Police Station when I was supposedly on the run from the Daily Mail as Britain's Most Wanted. After the whole shebang was over, and I emphasise little YouTuber, and this will become relevant later on, I don't have a criminal record. I'll come back to that. Now, I made friends with Steve Skerritt and I forgave him for a lot of stuff and I asked him if he would agree to let Graham video him while I interviewed him. We rented premises in Brighton at a business centre called Premier Business Centre. I think it was on the Steam, the level. Uh, we paid for it. Steve came along. We set our camcorder up and I interviewed him for about an hour and a half. Now, you had some of the seconds of that interview. That does not belong to ITV. You are completely mi mistaken. I've seen your community post. ITV did not pay for that. They did not arrange that. They were nothing to do with it, as I'm sure they can confirm. As I say, YouTube have resolved it. Now, I have the option on the fact you have a strike on your channel to withdraw my copyright strike against you. And I may consider doing that because I don't like to be mean or unfair despite the fact you've made some pretty nasty, spiteful, vicious videos about me and Graham, especially at this particular juncture of our lives when Graham's going through chemotherapy. Uh, that's another reason I'm not naming your channel because I don't want to destroy you because that is a very bad look to pick on someone who's undergoing chemotherapy. Now you can email me at avid at gardener.com and you can, uh, I'm open to talking, I'll talk to anybody. There may be conditions such as a public apology, public apology video, and I may consider withdrawing the copyright strike. In the meantime, I know that you apparently, which again, I didn't find this out until about three days ago, uh, when you said that uh, in a comment, Graham had stolen some of your copyright, a photograph of Alex Belfield. Graham and he said yes there was there was a thumbnail I took a photograph of Alex Belfield from Google from Google images and I used it as a thumbnail and he said some little youtuber came along put in a copyright strike because that was their thumbnail 
I've also seen on your community posts, you admit that that is not actually, you didn't take that photograph, it's not your photograph, that you put in a copyright claim for some other reason and Graham just put his hands up and the video was taken down. But this is where I'd like to bring it to your attention. When you did that, YouTube provided Graham with your name and address. And if you don't remove the public uh, comments that you've put up that I am a criminal because I do not have a criminal record, you will be receiving a letter from my lawyer, my solicitor in the UK, or I might just take it straight to small claims court. So take that down, have a little think about it, and be very careful when you use other people's property. Ask first. In the meantime, thank you very much YouTube for removing the copyright. And getting back to Megan, sorry for that guys, I hope you'll indulge me. Um, it's just one of those things, it's been going on a little while. I don't like bringing these things to the front, but this particular person, and I emphasize, not, I'm not saying male or female, this particular person has put a video out on YouTube public domain, has put comments, defamatory out on the public domain, has put community posts of which I've got all screenshots, and therefore I'm using this as my public right to reply, but I'm choosing not to identify or name that YouTuber in order to protect them and to offer them an opportunity to maybe have their strike removed. In the meantime, what are your thoughts and opinions about Megan? I think it speaks volumes. To me, it speaks volumes that she suddenly, her PR has said to her, you better get yourself out there. The phone's not ringing. In fact, quite the reverse. We're hearing locks and bolts going on every door on the inside. I mean, the Victoria David Beckham thing. Um, I see a, I saw some blind post about she's trying to rent a bed sit near a billionaire. She's going to be on that Invictus tour. She's going to be on that and it's her birthday on Friday. And I will make sure that I say happy birthday, Megan. I can't wait to hear what she comes out with. As always, these are just my thoughts and opinions. And I'd love to hear yours down in the comments below. Thank you very much for listening.